And now I would like to hand over to a man who is never more comfortable than when he's trawling the Southern Ocean for data. Does anyone here not know what the OSGO is? I figured you wouldn't. <laughs> That's the conference we're going to. It is the, essentially the AGM of OSGO. And that describes it for you. So it's the Open Source Geospatial Foundation. It's sort of the Apache equivalent in the open source GIS arena. They have probably 30 or 40 packages under the foundation that sort of work in this space, um, from databases to metadata catalogs to web mapping capabilities, um, GIS tools, etc. So the other group, that's how many people don't know what the OGC is. Even more. Um, it's an international standards body. NIWA is a member, so is LIN, so are some New Zealand councils, so is Landcare, so is MFE. So New Zealand has a fairly high profile in the OGC space. Um, you can see from the vision exactly what they're trying to do. So the portal I'm talking about tonight was originally built in 2007. So it's reasonably dated as these things go. Um, it uses these standards almost exclusively for information sharing and delivery. And when it, was, when it went live in 2008, um, MB said basically it was an exemplar of how this stuff should be done in New Zealand. The OGC standards are now recommended by DIA, by LINS, by MFE, and by councils for um, sharing geospatial data in New Zealand. So that's the portal, is using those. So that's some background as to sort of the technologies behind what I'm talking about. So OGC Web Services, um, I'm assuming I won't have to go into what's a NIWA for you guys because people in Tanzania don't know, but most people here have a better idea. <clears throat> um, why we did the portal, how we did it, what we're doing today and what we're doing with it. And the portal currently is support under contract with Catalyst. So it's sort of coming home here again. I don't know what NIWA is, I'm, I'm not from here. Okay, NIWA is one of the New Zealand Crown Research Institutes. Um, it's one of the three environmental institutes and it works in the ocean, air, water space. The, the other two are GNS, which is Geological Nuclear Sciences, and Land Care, which works with soils and land. Thank you. So, as I said, the portal uses AGC Web Services. Um, the main two it's using are WMS, WFS, which are Map Services and Feature Services. And does anyone, I presume a few people here don't know what those are. Where I'm going, almost everyone will. Um, a web map service, provide, the server renders a map for a client and sends it down to the client as an image. The feature service, the client requests the data, the data is sent by the server, and the client renders the image. If you're doing a New Zealand coastline and you have a million vertices defining it, it's quicker to have the server draw an image and send you that than it is to download a million points and plot them. The two things are companion services for, for mapping perspective. So it's not vector graphics, is it? Just, uh... Features are vector graphics. So WFES does vector. WMS can do both because the map is rendered a server side, so it can render a vector on top of what you get are the pixels. The WMS service does have a query capability, which does by location. So the client can click on a point on a WFS provided layer. This, the, it will send a request saying what information have you got at, at, at this location, and it will send that information back again, so you can query it as if it was a vector data set as well. Um, that covers that. Niwa, I've already covered that. The original portal. Um, it was originally for the OS 2020 program for a survey a couple of years we did over up Bay of Islands in northeast New Zealand. One of the 
unusual at that time, contrary to objectives, was to make all the data and information that came from the survey publicly available. This predated the declaration of open transparent government by four years. So it was, it was sort of a bit ahead of its time in terms of the agencies who wanted that done and in terms of us having to do it. It's pretty map centric. Um, it's focused on environmental and space, which is inherently spatial data. Um, we wanted a lot of information for all the agencies involved, so they were all sort of um, given some branding and a, and a place there, so they all kept them, kept them happy. Um, we set up a, a metadata catalogue, one of the first in the country, for cataloguing all the reports and data sets and providing access to those. And it was basically just providing a good and clear information about what was done where. Um, the data it's providing, there's about 20,000 seabed photos. When Silverstrike built the portal, um, they had lots of fun doing it. It was an enjoyable job compared to many. And I turned up one afternoon and was told, did I know there are three photos that have bottles in them? So someone at Silverstrike or some team at Silverstrike had gone through 20,000 images and counted the bottles. Um, the report was 14 chapters long. That's all online and downloadable. The underwater videos are there, multi-beam side scan data, the data from things like core samples, the core samples themselves are available for people to analyse physically if they have a research project that needs them. CTD is temperature and depth data. There were trawl and dredge and grab samples and high-res aerial photography, which took 14 months to get cloud-free days over the Bay of Islands. So AOTRR was, was a long white cloud for a lot of that time. Um, there were 12 government agencies managing the project, and they all have their sort of mention with links, etc. There are over 100 individuals in various roles, and they are all there by name. And what's, this was surprisingly popular, because I was told that people who don't often see their name on websites would go home and show their kids, look, this is me. And that human touch actually sort of added quite a lot to the way the portal was, was actually doing its job. Um, the map basically shows everywhere we sampled and allows you to drill down. So that example shows you drilling down to some of the photos. And again, from the map, every method, because the map is driven by the CMS and we built tools within the CMS to administer the map, every method is available as a map layer and every method has a web page that describes it and that's accessible directly from the map. So we wanted it to be reusable, we wanted it to be flexible, and a platform that we could build on. It was very much an open source, open standards, open data paradigm, particularly for back then. Um, all the software components we used were open source, which is courtesy of OSGO. All the data access was open standards from the OGC, which is why they were introduced early on. And all data was licensed under NZ Goal when NZ Goal came out. So again, a thank you to the government. The CMS is Silverstripe, the web map engine is open layers, the G network metadata catalog. We're using Map Server for our web services, and all data is managed in PostGIS. So it's a reasonably standard open source stack for doing this sort of thing these days. We built a custom Silverstripe module for managing the map. So essentially we can set up a map in the CMS and the map page allows us to define the map extent. It allows us to define um, layers within that map. And a layer is essentially a connection to a WMS or WFS service. So all the layers are provided outside. There's no GIS, there's no spatial data management within the portal whatsoever. And we've actually got now got layers from Esri and other places in it. And one of the things I quite enjoyed was a company in Carolina who was doing some work off the Bay of Islands coast found the portal and within two weeks they'd embedded the web services in their website to reuse them as well. So that's genuine open accessible data via standard APIs. So that's what the 
If you're familiar with the service stripe, that looks pretty typical. There is an open layers management tool that allows us to configure a map and map layers. When we have a map, configure a map layer, that's where we identify the methods page that's linked to it. We can also specify metadata keywords, so from the map you can do a metadata catalogue search on those keywords and return anything in the metadata catalogue that links to that layer via those keywords. So it actually integrates the map to a lot of the other functionality that you'd normally get in this sort of system. So yep, you set all the parameters for a map, the map extent, zoom layers, various bits and pieces. Layer management, there's a range of layers there, so <coughs> each of those is essentially a WMS or WFS service. And that's where you add the URL to your service, specify the symbology you want for it, specify the um, ranking of the layer, whether it's a background layer or one of the foreground layers, etc. The we CSW is a OGC standard for catalogue data. It's supported by CCANAGY Network and most metadata catalogues these days. We have a client in the CMS that um, we actually um, borrowed from LINS because it was developed by Silverstripe for geodata.gov.nz and we just purloined it with their permission and built it into the portal so we have a, our own access to the metadata catalogue behind the scenes. Um, we just set up what the endpoints are for the catalogue and you can search and browse any CSW catalogue and this could easily talk to Linz's geodata or data.gov.nz they all support the same OGC catalogue there's clicked on a DTIS layer DTIS is a deep toed imaging system for NIWA 20,000 photos so you can click on a site and the carousel at the bottom will allow you to scroll through all the photos taken at that site and download and see metadata and again from the map you can click on it and see the, what the DTIS actually is for the method you're looking at. So you've got access to the data, the method and you can see it on the map. <coughs> As I said the um, endpoints for the web services are industry standard. Most web mapping and GIS tools can actually interact with them natively. So the CMS knows about all the web map services, web feature services we're using and can provide a list of those for anyone else to tap into and plug into their own systems and reuse the data natively that we're getting in the system. Today um, it's been rebranded. It's now the Niwa Marine Data Portal. Um, we found that a number of projects other than the Bay of Islands one, a web presence was a useful way to sort of present what we're doing and provide people with the data information. Um, it's very quick and easy to add another project into the framework and the entire website was um, taken by NIWA and MPI for the New Zealand Marine Biosecurity Portal so that's using the same framework, completely repurposed for that as well. So <coughs> any marine research project in NIWA that wants a web based home we tend to throw it at this because it's quick and easy and it does fairly versatile. When a project requires new functionality, we fund that and add it to the portal, so it's actually a work in progress, continually having functionality and tools growing. The marine biosecurity one, different look and feel, but it's essentially the same tools under the hood. In future, we've got more projects to add to provide more access to more data sets, more information. Um, migrating it to 4.2. We're considering adding support at the moment. It supports open layers as a mapping engine in the open source community. Um, Leaflet is the other very common mapping engine. And we're considering adding support for Leaflet in the Silverstripe admin tool. Um, we are looking at having the map tool using the iframe support maps from other providers such as Google and Esri. Um, because they're not managed within the portal, you'll lose integration. But a lot of people already have stuff in Google and Esri, so allowing them to sort of embed those in this eventually will be useful. Um, and <coughs> SOS is the OGC's sensor observation service. NIWA now has, in the last couple of months, we have got a production service running for our hydrometric freshwater and our climate monthly summary data. 
So using the, the OGC SOS clients, you can plug into that and access those data. So it's not just the spatial, we're now also looking at sensor time series data and building support for that, those sorts of data in the um, system. Is anyone here familiar with LAWA? Land, Air, Water, AOTRI? It's an MFE and council initiative to share, make public all the council freshwater information. And as I said, um, most agencies are mandating the OGC protocols for sharing data. MFE has a working group with a number of other agencies called NEMS, the National Environment Monitoring Standards. They have a draft document coming out which says that uh, sensor data in New Zealand will be shared using the SOS service. There are three tools in New Zealand used to manage sensor data for councils and CRIs. Um, that's KISTAS, Hilltop and 52 North. And they all provide data via SOS. So it's very much the way we're heading and moving. Um, that's it in a nutshell, quick and easy. You can find it, see the portal if you want, have a play. The code's available. Silver Strike know it very well. And any questions before I do a run? You, you mentioned methods a few times. Yep. The um, method will be things like we will do a camera deployment or a trawl deployment or a dredge or a bottom grab. So each of those sort of has its own sort of data and it's oriented around the method that was used to capture the data. So the map layers tends to show where the different methods were deployed and describe what was deployed, what, what that method is, etc. Yep. Also, Almost all of them. Um, sorry, the ones I mentioned in New Zealand? Yeah. No. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No. No. Um, Hilltop is a New Zealand product mm. from um, Mark Rogers and Napier. You know, you know Mark, do you? No. Kistas is a German product. 52 North is an open source product. That's the one Neil has gone with. And we now contract 52 North to manage it ourselves. We tried to do it in house, which was a dismal failure, so we've gone to them now. They do it for us. Um, with the services now running, the next steps we're looking at are clients. We are currently, I have a prototype working version of a QGIS client that allows you to connect to a SOS service, see the various um, observation types you can see, choose those, add them to the map, click on one, view and download the sensor data from those sites. And I'm working with Horizons Council for Hilltop support and Waikato Regional Council for Pistas support. So the QGIS tool will support all the New Zealand Council services, etc., natively once it goes live. Um, there was a SOS for R tool. It supported version one of SOS. It was written by a German student. It is no longer supported, and it doesn't support version two of SOS. Um, I'm contracting. The student now works for 52 North. Um, they, they will be starting a contract in November to develop a new SOS for R that will support all these web services, all, all the various dialects from the different ones in New Zealand, so that Fukugis is a free tool for anyone as a graphical client. There will also be the SOS for R, so any R user can just connect to Council or NIWA or Landcare or GNS SOS services and access the data they're providing. The uh, humanitarian OpenStreetMap team? Yes. Okay, have you worked together? A lot of what you were saying just sounded sort of like you should be talking to each other, so if you have, then my question is over. Yes. It is very much a global community. OGC is a member, um, so, sorry, OSGO is a member of OGC. Okay. Um, there's sort of the um, W3C for all their standards are also part, part, part of this whole, whole group. So, yeah, it's a very open and generally working quite well framework. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh. You, you mentioned a third party who started using your stuff and integrated it into the yep. website in a couple of weeks. Were they working with you to no. do that? No, they basically saw the website, sort of saw how it was working, grabbed the URL for the endpoint for the, um, and just embedded that in, in a WMS client. It was actually the, um, it 
If you see the map there, you can see the aerial photography. Somewhere, and I've forgotten where, I can't find it again, someone had written two kids that put their initials in big letters in the sand, and we've actually got a photograph of it. I'd love to put that up there somewhere and just say, does anyone know who did this 10 years ago? Because <laughs> it's here. But um, the, you can see the high-res bathymetry map behind that as a background layer. So um, one of the concerns a lot of people had was around areas like the Poor Nights, you can now see where every little offshore reef is. And so that enables the sort of people to crawl much closer to them. If they're outside the reserve, it allows recreational fishers to actually target things they may not otherwise find. But open data is open data. You actually sort of make it available. So what, he, what, what they were doing was working on, with the lobster industry. So on their website, they, had the, they, they put this data with a map so they could see where all the foul ground was for the lobster industry for that part of the country. So. Yep. No. No, they just, they just emailed me to say, have a look at this, and I did. No, oh, cool, it's working. <laughs> and that's what open data is about. Yeah. It's not just providing it, it's providing an, an accessible, reusable format. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Was it plans to do the rest of the country, or is it just no. a bit No. Um, if you go to the Mean Data Portal, the, one of the projects there shows where all NIWA's multi beam and seismic data that coverage is. That was done for the oil and gas industry. Um, so it was quite profitable because now they, we, they found that we've already surveyed areas, so they can just pay us to do a desktop study of data we've already got rather than sending a boat out to survey it again. So, when we were doing seabed mining, <laughs> or before the change of government. Right. Nothing. Thanks.